Hi, this is Tammy McClish. Let's go ahead and take a look at Section 1, Introduction to Radiographic Equipment and Basic Terms. Now, whether you're doing this for continuing ed or you're viewing this to take the didactic test prior to the GXMO licensure, it all comes down to the same thing. The reason that we take x-rays is because we are going to um, provide the physician or the practitioner with a method to review what's going on inside the patient's body. And ultimately, it's up to us as x-ray technologists or general x-ray machine operators to make certain that we decrease the amount of radiation to the patient and we protect the patient from excess exposure. So let's go through some definitions, and these are definitions that are going to be important for you. The definition of collimation. Collimation restricts the useful x-ray beam to that part of the body that's going to be imaged and thereby spares adjacent issues from unnecessary radiation exposure. So let's take a look at the third picture here. Let's take a look at the hand x-ray. Well, let's take a look at the hand that's going to be x-rayed. In this situation, we have a hand, and that is a left hand, and that left hand would be attached to a person who would be sitting in that chair. Now, the reason the patient is facing forward instead of facing the table is because we want to make sure that we're taking the thyroid and we're taking the gonads and taking them as far away from the radiation source as possible. If the patient was seated with their hand forward, and their gonads underneath that table, then we would definitely increase the radiation to the patient's gonads and thyroid. So that's why we try to take those portions of the body as far away as possible. The other thing we would do is if we were selecting which side of the table the patient was going to be x-rayed on, we want to make sure that the patient is being x-rayed on the side of the table that is farthest from us as the operator. So in this case, the patient is as far away from the console as possible. The light field is the beam of light exiting the x-ray tube, and the operator should consider the light field approximate to the x-ray beam. Make sure it's appropriate for the x-ray beam. So in the picture of the hand, the cassette that is being used is actually a 14 by 17 IR cassette. It is a digital cassette. Now, the amount of light that you're seeing is definitely less than 14 by 17 inches. If you take a look at the very first picture of the collimator, you'll see that there are some numbers on that collimator. And those, normal, those numbers are situated there, and they are for each source to image dif distance. So if typically most x-rays are going to be taken at a 40 inch source to image distance. So if I was going to take a hand x-ray, I would probably start my collimator beam so that the light is shedding over an 8 by 10 surface on my cassette or my image receptor. And that's probably where I would start. Or if I was going to have a chest x-ray and it was 72 inch SID, I would look at the 72 inch lines and I would make sure that I open up my collimators up to a 14 by 17 cassette or image receptor. And that gets you in the ballpark before the patient walks in. Now the middle picture, you're seeing the light over top of the table. Now, if I had set those um, beam restrictors to 14 by 17, I would wanna make sure that it is 17 inches in length and 14 inches side to side and then I would want to bring my x-ray tube all the way up so that it is 40 inches from the grid. And that would make an appropriate x-ray beam. Prior to beginning a patient, you want to bring the patient into the room after you have the room ready. So you should make certain that the light field is no larger than the image receptor chosen. So in this instance, we're x-raying a hand. Then you should make sure that an image receptor is about an eight by 10 collimated light. And then you can bring the patient into the room and start with the x-ray. Now, it really doesn't matter if you are going to have a patient coming in for a um, film screen cassette, a computerized cassette, or a digital image receptor. 
you probably always want to place the body part in the very center of the cassette. Let's consider that the sweet spot of the cassette. Now, some cassettes you have to be in the center of the cassette, but I just put everybody in the middle of the cassette if I'm able to do that, and I will have a much better image when the image props up to the radiologist or the practitioner that's going to read the image. So we kind of sort of talked about this, these couple terms, but let's really give it a good talking right now. Image receptor is an IR. Now we used to always say cassettes, but when we get into digital, we call it an IR, image receptor. The very first picture you are seeing is a film screen combination cassette. A film screen cassette is the rigid holder that contains the film and the screens. That is a film-based system. The second cassette you're seeing in the middle that is orange is a CR cassette. A computerized radiography cassette is the rigid holder that contains an X-ray sensitive plate. This cassette uses a photostimulable phosphor to generate a latent image. And then the third picture you're seeing is a DR cassette or an IR system. A digital radiography image receptor contains a capture element made up of sodium iodine cesium iodine, radiolinium oxysulfate, or amorphous selenium. The coupling element that is that which transfers the x-ray generated signal to the collection element during these exposures. Let me tell you, when you are picking up these different cassettes, you're going to know right away what you have just based upon the weight. Now, if you put a grid on one of these cassettes, it's going to be very heavy. But for the most part, the digital cassette is going to be a very heavy cassette. Now, the digital cassette, or the IR, is also very expensive. But remember, you're only using one. So if you drop it, you can actually shock that image receptor. And if you shock the image receptor too many times, you're going to start to see degrading of your image. The pictures you're seeing here are showing you patient positioning aids. The first picture is of a sponge. A sponge is a support that reduces exposure that is likely to occur because the part is not supported during exposure. And the gentleman here is laying on a sponge that helps him to elevate his chin by putting his body higher than his head. Now, when you are using a sponge, if it is in the radiographic field, you wanna make sure that it does not show up on the radiograph. You wanna make sure that it is radiolucent. You also wanna make sure that your sponges have the ability to clean in between the patients. The second picture you're seeing here is something that's called a pigastat. Now, that's a very old device that we used to use um, this is actually my son when he was really little. I put him in the pigastat. The pigastat secured patients so that we didn't move them, so that they didn't move during the exam. And what was very nice is I could just turn him sideways and I could shoot a lateral chest x-ray. And that little um, device in front of him that has some yellow markers, that's actually a gonad shield. So it was nice because it shielded the gonads. And they didn't, they didn't hurt when they were in there. They actually laughed and thought it was funny. We tell them they were riding the horsey and they were fine. The third picture is my son and I have him on the table. And what I've done is I've papoosed him. I've taken a sheet, I laid it down on the table and then I put one part of the sheet over his left arm, tucked it under his body one part over his right arm, tucked it under his body so that he doesn't move his arms during the procedure. And that's a real easy way to keep them from moving. And the third picture, excuse me, the fourth picture you're seeing is called the Tamum board. The Tamum board is used in pediatrics so that the, the patients don't use during the procedure. So the um, last three pictures are all immobilization devices, which are used to minimize motion in certain cases, definitely in pediatrics. Sometimes we'll use a sandbag 
and we'll place it over the arm and it may aid in immobilization of the arm. So there's all different types of immobilization devices we can use. I actually will sometimes take um, quarts of milk and put sand inside of them and then take some tape and wrap it around the handle so it's not sharp and then have the patients just hold that if I'm taking a lateral picture of their cervical spine and I wanna be able to move their shoulders out of the way. I'll also take that and I will put it next to their leg if I don't want their leg to move for a support device. This picture here is showing you two different ways that your x-ray tube can be supported in the room. The first picture you're seeing is a ceiling mounted tube support also known as a ceiling crane or tube hanger. It suspends the x-ray tube from a system of tracks, allowing it to be moved to all locations throughout the room. The second one is probably one you're gonna see more often in a clinic, and that is a tube stand. It is a vertical support with a horizontal arm that suspends the tube over the radiographic table. The tube stand rolls along a track and is secured to the floor and sometimes it's also secured to the ceiling or the wall, and it's parallel to the x-ray table. Now, when you're moving the x-ray tube, there's lots of terms you're going to have to know. The one true term you're going to have to know is transverse. Transverse means that the x-ray tube goes across the table at a right angle to longitudinal. Longitudinal means that the tube runs along the long axis of the table. Vertical means that it raises and lowers the height of the table and the height of the x-ray tube. Angle means that you can tilt or roll the tube along the longitudinal axis of the table and allows the tube to be aimed at the wall rather than the table. And then the one a lot of people have difficulty learning how to find is the detent. It is a special mechanism that tends to stop a moving part in a specific location. So you may have a detent on your table so that you can raise your table and it will automatically stop at 40 inches. Or you may have a detent which will take your x-ray tube and point it exactly to the upright bucky or exactly to the center of the table bucky. Now the problem occurs if you have a floating tabletop, you really have to make sure that you are detented to the x-ray tube table. In this picture, I'm gonna go over some terms you need to know. The first one is primary x-ray beam. It is the x-ray beam that leaves the tube and is unattenuated except by the air. The x-ray source tube is the source of x-rays that is in the x-ray tube. The central ray is the useful beam that is the imaginary line generated by the innermost x-ray in the beam. And for properties, the primary x-ray beam, the direction and location are predictable and controllable. So these are just some terms that we use when we're talking about the primary x-ray beam. Now let's take a look at the x-ray table, the upright cassette, and how they are similar and different. The x-ray table is going to have movements. The x-ray table has three movements. It will move vertical, it will tilt, and it will float. The reason it moves vertical is because it has a motor that drives the table up or down. The way that it will tilt is because it also has a motor that drives from horizontal to vertical or somewhere in between. And the table floats. Sometimes the table type moves independently of the table base. Now, not all tables do this, but if they are doing this for you, it's a great thing. 
And sometimes you can actually move the table in Trendelenburg, which means that you can position the head lower than the feet. And that's always important for us if we're working with the patient and we're trying to get barium to move when we're doing procedures with patients. Now, under the table, you have something that is called a bucky or a grid. The bucky is an imaginary tray. And this tray is mounted under the tabletop. And it has a grid between the tray and the radiographic table. Now, the last picture is the upright cassette holder. And that also has a bucky inside of it. In some situations, you can actually remove the grid that is inside that upright cassette holder. And that's usually if you can open up the facing of the cassette holder. But if you do that, I actually worked in a place one time where that when somebody put it in back, put it back in, they put it in backwards. That's not a good thing because our x-rays were awful. I was actually working at a place where that the person that was in charge of the maintenance put it in backwards. So try not to remove a grid unless it is one that is specifically needed in order for you to place it over top of a image receptor or on top of a cassette. Let's take a look at some control panel components. The one term you're going to need to know is timer. The exposure timer is a device that terminates the exposure by, offering, by op opening a switch after a preset time has elapsed. So if I want my exposure to be one-tenth of a second, it would shut that time off. KVP. KVP means kilovolt peak. It is the measurement of the maximum electrical potential across an X-ray tube expressed in kilovolts. AEC. AEC means automated exposure control. It is a feature that determines radiation exposure during radiography in most imaging systems. Not everybody has AEC. And then MA is milliamp. It's the measure of X-ray tube current. Now there's some more things on here that I did not discuss, but we will be going over those in detail when we get to those pieces in the control panel. Remnant radiation. Here's a picture of my son again. Remnant radiation, x-rays that pass through the patient and interact with an image receptor. So the radiation that is going through my son and is interacting with a cassette in front of him. That is called remnant radiation. And finally, scatter radiation. X-rays scattered back in the direction of the incident X-ray beam. So there's lots and lots of terms we're gonna be talking about, but these are just the ones that I wanna start and we'll move on as we go through the different modules.